Hey everyone, welcome back to Freestyle Friday. I have a visual feast of a lesson for you today. But first, just an apology or an explanation. I hope you like beige stucco because I'm thinking that's what we're actually gonna be seeing for a lot. I went and tried to film out on location this week. Um, I went to the steps of the Capitol building, which to me, it's like a wedding cake and a government building had a baby. It is so beautiful. And then I went and filmed by the river and in both places, it was terrible mainly because of audio. I don't, I'm not a video person, but I sounded terrible and there was so much wind and traffic and noise that you could barely hear what I was saying. So you know what? It is hard to make three videos a week. So I think I'm just gonna do it here at my house with the stucco on the patio because that is so much easier than schlepping all over town. And I definitely wanna keep going. I don't want any barriers for me to keep bringing you high school lessons. All right, so let's get into this week. I hope you guys had a great week and you're primed for a great weekend. All right, let's talk about some commonly confused words. A few times throughout our year together on Freestyle Fridays, high school English here on YouTube, I'm gonna show you some word pairings that kids often mess up that I see in their writing, just drawing your attention to these so that you don't make similar mistakes. Now I'm gonna let you decide what makes sense for learning these words. Some of the pairs are what we call homophones. They sound alike but are spelled differently and mean different things. But some of them are just really, really close. They're not like actual official homophones, but they're close enough that I think that they're worthy of a few minutes of our time. All right. You get to decide how this makes sense for you to learn it. You can write down the rule that's on my first slide here, or you can just listen to me talk about it, up to you. Um, and then I will always give you three sentences for us to practice the word pairing so that you choose the right one. And you'll see that on the next slide. Okay, so first up, I wanna talk about site, S-I-T-E, which means a place or location, and sight, S-I-G-H-T, which means things involving your eyeballs, things to do with vision. And I have this super cool space selfie from 2012 to illustrate this for us. So you can always hit pause if I'm talking too fast or if you wanna spend some time writing down either the rule or the sentences that you're about to see on the next slide. And then whenever you're ready, you'll just hit play and I'll be here waiting to pick up the action to take you through these words. All right, so your first sentences, uh, you can write these down or just listen. Number one, astronaut Akehiko Hoshidi, hope I said that right, took this space selfie in 2012, sharing a rare and beautiful sight with the world. Go ahead and make your choice. You can write the whole sentence if you want that practice, or you can just write the one word if that's all you need. Number two, Hoshidi's work sites have been the International Space Station and the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean make your choice. And then sentence number three, to train for space, astronauts usually spend at least a week under sea wit witnessing sites few of us will ever know. In researching the background for this slide, that's actually true. Uh, space agencies have like pods on the floor of the ocean where astronauts go so they can simulate that kind of otherworldly and somewhat claustrophobic, keeping it real, feeling that they would have in space just to see if they mentally have like got it. All right, if you're ready for the answers, I'm about to advance. So now you're gonna check yourself. In red, I've marked with the, my answer key. So number one, a beautiful sight, things we see with our eyes. Number two, it's the physical location, his work site, S-I-T-E. Um, and then witnessing sights, uh, the, the dolphins swimming by, or I don't know if dolphins swim at the floor of the ocean. I don't know. I've never been to the floor of the Atlantic Ocean, but I'm sure there's some pretty cool kind of things. I'm thinking anglerfish, anyone from Finding Nemo? I'll bet that's down there. Okay. Now I'm going to give you two sets of these each time because I feel like just the, just the sight and sights isn't enough. So let's talk about our next one farther and further. Often inter used interchangeably when they should not be. When you think of using farther, I want you to think of physical distance, like a far, far way to run, okay? When you, when you use the word further, I want you to think of more figurative use, like not literal distance, or mental distance, like effort that's gonna have to happen. So you're writing down that rule. Again, pause is your friend whenever we do commonly confused words. Here are your sentences. Number one, again, you can write down the sentence or just write down the word choice, your, your call. I'm cool with either. Number one, the jump was farther or further than he'd ever attempted. Number two, by posting the jump on YouTube, he hoped to farther or further his stuntman career. And number three, afterward, reporters wanted to know if the stuntman hoped to conquer even farther or further jumps. Hit pause, make your choice, because here comes the answer key. Number one, we're looking for farther, right? It's a clear distance. 
Number two is further. He's just kind of like mentally trying to like, you know, increase the scope or increase the success of his career. And then number three, again, we could, we could measure the jumps. In fact, they do. So farther is the one we want there. All right. I hope this was helpful and that you're now using farther and further correctly in your writing moving forward. Uh, I think it would be cool just like we do with some of the work, if you left some sentences below in the comment section, right? How about you write me a sentence using sight, one using sight, S-I-G-H-T, uh, and then give me one using farther and one using further. Hey, that would be rad. Uh, hit a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Tell me how you're doing. What's going on? It's Friday. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh. I am so tired, but I'm going to keep on going. Have a great weekend, you guys. I'll be back on Monday. Mechanics, usage, and grammar. I hope you're well. Peace out.